When we started full-time travel just over a year ago, we had the vision, which I think a lot of people do, of that you're just going to be going all the time, you're going to be seeing a bunch of different sites, um, you're going to be moving place to place, it's going to be exciting. And it's not that that's not the case, but our eyes were opened a little bit. Yeah, it's not all uh, uh, rainbows and unicorns, they might say. <laughs> right. But with that being said, we're not, we're not complaining about mm -hmm. what we're doing, we don't have any regrets, we love our lifestyle, but there are some things to be aware of. Now, when you go on vacation, you plan on where you're going, you research what there is to do and wherever it is you're going, and you go do it without any worries. We can't quite get away with that. No. So we plan our next location, we're excited for our next location, we get there, and we enjoy it for a bit, but that whole time, you're in planning process for where are you going next. And that takes a lot of research, it takes a lot of planning, because we don't just, you know, willy-nilly figure out a place we're gonna go and hop on a plane and go. Uh, we have to be very strategic about where are we going, how many places are in that area that we can go see. So there's just a lot of work that goes into it. It's not just all fun. One of the things that probably doesn't settle well with a lot of people, and I know we've had a lot of questions about that, is you don't have a home base. We don't have a place that we go home to that is ours with our stuff uh, when we go back and visit family. Right. We're staying with family or we're house sitting or something like that. So that's a little challenging at times. You know, you just, you're always moving. Nothing's ours. <laughs> Nothing's <basically>. ours. We <laughs> have our, our carry on luggage and that's, that's pretty that's much it. it. Another thing is traveling full time is tiring. It's not, when you're going on vacation, you're super excited. You're excited through the whole thing and then you get home and usually need a vacation from your vacation. But we're doing it full time, so there's not that downtime really and you get tired. You do get tired. Now we do have our down days and we do relax, we do go to the beach mm -hmm. and we have that time, but with that comes our next plan, our next destination, what's next. Recently we decided to give what we consider faster travel a try. So we were at most staying two weeks in a location. Some places we stayed three days. Um, so we traveled and ultimately in the end of a just over two month period of time, we went to 11 different locations. In that time period when we were done, I was absolutely kind of to the end of the rope. I was, I was exhausted. She was tired. <laughs> I and, was tired. Not that I wasn't, it's just a different uh, style and the way we like to do things. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't prefer moving as fast as we did. Mm -hmm. It was too much. It was it was too much planning. It was too much packing. It was too much go, go, go. Yeah. We prefer a month at a time, but others may prefer that. Right. It's just how you decide you want to do it. Yeah. We got tired. I prefer to have, I like to have a little bit of routine to my, to my days and you don't get any of that when you are traveling and moving all the time. So when we land someplace and we are there for a month, you can build that routine again. You can get up in the morning, work out, you can, whatever it is that your routine is for that day, but you can do that when you're moving all the time, you don't have it. So. Now things don't always go as planned on travel days. As much research as you put into it, and as much planning as you do, there are some things that are just out of your control. Uh, plans can get delayed. Um, you know, you can not be able to find a taxi, which has happened before. Right. So no matter how short that day seems, travel days are kind of tiring. They are very tiring. It doesn't matter how short they are. We have learned that long day, short day, just a bus ride, three flights, it doesn't <laughs> matter. We're exhausted at the end of it. And that also could have to do with we're 50 years old. So uh, yeah. that might that's be why, part of it. That's why we don't film a lot of <laughs> yeah. our travel days. It's just because it's just one extra element that we don't want to deal with. We do a lot of research before we decide on a location that we're going to visit. We really look at the area, what's around it, uh, the area of town we want to stay in, all of that. And then all of a sudden you arrive and sometimes you kind of look at each other and like, <laughs> it's going to be a long month. So yeah. just because you've done all the research and everything, you may not like the place that you end up at. Yeah, it could be difficult. As far as um, how close is the grocery store, um, just little things like that. Mm -hmm. You've got it for a month, so you got to deal with it. So, and you know, the first week or so could be fantastic, 
and then the next three weeks kind of drag on. Yeah. So we've kind of learned though now in the beginning when we would end up being someplace and we kind of had that feeling, we now instead look at that time as really good downtime, relax time, recoup time, uh, work time, regroup for what videos we want to do, things like that. Um, so we've turned that time, tried to make a positive out of negative. Yeah, things. we've learned to pace ourselves. <laughs> yes. yes. Now there will be those days where there's nothing really to do. There's nothing going on. You've kind of done everything. That's kind of like why we like to pace ourselves is so we don't run out of things to do mm -hmm. over the course of a month. But there will be those days where you're just kind of hanging out and there's nothing to do because you've already done everything there is to do in that location. Right. And that's okay. And I think that was one of the things that was really interesting when we started. And even to this point, we'll have people ask us all the time, have you done this? What are you doing about this or whatever? And I think the expectation is that you're going to be busy going and seeing something every single day. The reality is that's not the case at all. The reality is yeah. there are days that the only time that we leave our condo is to go to the grocery store or something like that. It's regular living. You're just living somewhere else. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> now, full-time travel as a couple, you are together 24 seven, you know, unless you, I don't know, we tend to go work out separately or something like that, but you're together all the time. That could be a challenge for some people. A good example is I'm definitely more just sitting at home, maybe watching a movie or doing some work online, whatever. And Brian is a bit more social than I am. You, he is one of those that he could definitely thrive better by probably being around some people on more, more occasions than I would care to. I'm a people person. He is a people person. So for those people that are traveling and they do want that social element, there are plenty of things that you can do. You can get into Facebook groups and stuff prior mm -hmm. to arriving at a location, get involved that way. But once again, that takes effort and it takes yeah. work because you've got to plan ahead. You've got to start kind of getting involved in that group prior to getting to the location. So, but yeah. that is a good point though. There are expat communities in just about every community you go to. So there are opportunities. Mm -hmm. Now you will also get homesick, mm -hmm. not necessarily homesick of where you're from, mm -hmm. but you'll become homesick of your friends, your family. You just will miss out on those social gatherings, um, family gatherings, birthdays, and things like that. And holidays. Holidays. Yeah. yeah, we will be home this year for the holidays, but mm -hmm. last year we weren't. Last year we missed Christmas. Last year was a challenging year. Yeah. It was our first year out. And so our ex time between being home was about seven months. Yeah. And that was just too long for me. Five month point for me is kind of when I start to get that, I need to get home and see my kids. I need to get home and see my family. So we're adjusting things now, so. We're on, we're on schedule now. We're on a better track. Yes. <laughs> then there's that concern what if something happens at home and I'm not there and you have to get home? That's a real concern. It, if an emergency happens, we're never really that close by. It is going to take us a time to get home. And so, you know, that that's, can be a stressor. It also can be a decision in the locations that we visit because if you visit a place, we have been in locations where we felt maybe a little bit more isolated from yeah. transportation to be able to get to an airport easily and to be able to get out of town. Uh, and so situating yourself maybe in more of those um, main areas with an international airport yeah, adds, adds a little more comfort, but that is a true concern. Now the next thing, you're gonna start missing the little things that you've just become accustomed to in life. Um, the things you're used to eating, the things you're used to buying at the grocery store, just those little items that you just simply can't find that you'll have to replace with something different. Right. And it ends up being work uh, when we go to the grocery yeah. store and we are trying to plan our meals. It's not like what we were used to for our entire life. You walk into a grocery store, you know exactly what you need to make a certain recipe that you're making. You have to figure every element out for the new location you're in. And when you're moving every month, potentially yeah. new country every month, they carry all different kinds it of changes. products. Yeah. yeah. So it can be, it can remove some of the fun from it. Um, just and even just the basic products, you know, as a woman walking in, you may have facial products you use or hair products you use or things that you were just your go-tos. 
you can't read the bottles. You don't know the ingredients on them. It's, you know, and, and being carry on only, it's not like we can pack those items and carry them all with us. So we definitely look forward to when we do go home and you get to walk into the grocery store and you get to just experience going and grabbing that peanut butter, which by the yeah. way, is really hard to find in other countries. I haven't had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich <laughs> since we left a year and a half ago. <laughs> or his Heinz ketchup. He yeah. loves his Heinz ketchup. I do ketchup, find not, that. Yeah, we not do find that in most places. But you definitely appreciate when you do have that opportunity to walk into places and just get what you know you're going, you get home and you know what it is. Now, there is always the option to eat out, which we did a lot of when we were in Romania, when we were moving around a little bit more. But that's also kind of a chore, mm -hmm. not being able to read the menu, uh, not knowing exactly what you're going to get, even if you can read the menu, where are you going to go mm -hmm. that you haven't already been to, all those things start becoming work right and just the, yeah when you're at home and you go let's go out tonight you may have your favorite restaurant that you go to you know right. what you're going to order you know what it's going to taste like you look forward to it you definitely look forward to eating foods in different in different countries absolutely but sometimes you just look forward to going out and having what you know you want right so that's why we probably lean on pizza a little bit because well, that's pizza. probably the, yeah. the one the closest <laughs> guarantee that we can get. Another really big area for us is the Airbnbs. Once again, you can research as much as you can. You can make sure you have a star rating that you don't go under. You read reviews. You do all of the work that right. you possibly can. But what we have learned is almost always they're not exactly as they appear. First off, one thing to be to take note of. When you look at a picture online, just like with real estate, they use a wide angle lens. Yeah. So everything that you look at is gonna be much larger in the picture than it is when you open that door to your Airbnb. It's always right. a lot smaller. So just be aware of that. We are now, so we know what we're expecting. But there are just so many elements in an Airbnb that yeah. is different. I mean, the, the couch might not be comfortable. You they, can't they're tell. They're rarely comfortable. <laughs> if you're looking at a picture, they're rarely comfortable. Yeah. Um, just little things like that, uh, switching beds and pillows every single month yeah. can become a challenge. Um, little things like that. The comforts of home just aren't in an Airbnb, not yeah. like you're used to. There's just little things that's kind of interesting. We found that for some reason, a lot of countries don't think a fitted sheet is necessary on yeah. a bed. That may sound super simple, but try sleeping without a fitted sheet and just put a flat sheet over your mattress. It yeah. moves and shifts all night long. I just, move and shift all night long. <laughs> so that sheet gets up underneath yeah, me. His side of the bed's yeah. usually a bigger mess than pulled. mine. <laughs> no. But then also the comforter. For some reason, the comforters are usually not the full size of the bed. So you're struggling with that a little bit. Um, you've got your kitchen. One of the first things we do when we get to our Airbnb is walk into the kitchen and see what are we going to be dealing with for the next 28 days. Right. And some, you know, you may not have a toaster. You may not have a coffee pot. I'll just say that a microwave. lot of the time you don't have a coffee pot. Yeah, rarely do you have a microwave. Right. There are so many things that um, you miss in your kitchen that you're just so used to having to prep a meal. Sharp knives. We actually used to always carry with us a knife sharpener right. uh, and that was fine and we would continue to do that if we were not doing carry on only. But doing carry on only we had to get rid of that. Uh, but that is something, even a, a really crappy knife you can at least sharpen and make it useful. Now, I, do, I also just want to stop and say we're not complaining. No. I mean, it sounds like we are. But this is the ugly truth. But this is the ugly truth of what we're doing. I just want to make sure. We're usually incredibly positive yes. people. So yes. we are sharing with you the negative. So you walk in with your eyes wide open. Correct. Another thing is the currency. So each location that we go to, you are going to deal with a different currency a lot of the time. Most places, yeah. Fortunately, uh, in Europe, there's a lot of places that are on the Euro, and so that makes it a little bit easier. But here in the Balkans, it's been different currency pretty right. much in every location. So. That's something you have to kind of navigate a little bit. Just learn the math. Now, there are apps that help out with mm -hmm. that, but you also don't want to get stuck with that currency when you leave, like I did. I had 1,700 lake in my pocket from Albania, thinking when I got to Greece, I would just exchange it. Well, I can't find a place anywhere in Europe that takes Albanian lake. So I have $170 
He's still in my pocket. He checks every single currency place that we pretty much walk yeah. by and uh, without luck, unfortunately. For the last so. seven months, I've been looking for a place. To take <laughs> we'll have to go back to Albania. If you're going, let me know. <laughs> okay, good deal. Another thing that was kind of interesting, I found this actually just traveling on a vacation to Europe, so a lot of people may be aware of this, is that you, first off, public restrooms are incredibly hard to find in a lot of areas. Uh, but when you do find them, a lot of places charge you to use the restrooms. So that, now we're used to it. And honestly, like, I don't care if I have to pay for the restroom as long as we find a restroom. So the challenge is usually just finding a restroom that you well, can use. What we've done is we've actually gone into a bar, mm -hmm. paid for a beer, and used their restroom. Yeah. Which but, is better than... But then we need a restroom again sooner, so... Yeah. <laughs> it's counter, yeah. Now, one of our most asked questions is credit cards, ATMs, cash, how do we do it, what do we do? So you'll need to figure out the currency rate at each country you're in. You'll also have to carry cash, even though a lot of places will take a credit card, some places don't. And we've come across this a few times. Usually when I get my hair cut, I need cash. And there's been several times where we've needed cash, buses, some trains. So just keep that in mind as well. Right. And it's actually kind of interesting to us because we've been in many places where we've actually been in places where we've asked if they take a card and then we go to pay and they go, oh, no, no, cash. Yeah. So, um, but we've also run into so many situations where we say, okay, well, we don't have cash. We'll run and get some. Oh, okay, yeah, no problem. So that's a different thing yeah. from us from in the States. I don't, they wouldn't Yeah, we come really back a half an hour that. later to pay. <laughs> yeah. on that a little bit, <laughs> but we do that. Another thing with uh, the ATMs and credit cards. So we both carry two credit cards each. We don't carry them on us, but while we travel, we have two credit cards each, and we also have our ATM cards, um, actually two ATM cards mm -hmm. as well each. And there's a little bit of reason behind that. So with our ATMs, Brian has had a situation where he actually used an ATM that was just one of those basic ATMs that was located at a grocery store, and it was one of those standalone units. He put his card in, and there was nothing wrong with his card. There wasn't a problem with that, but it took the card. Fortunately, we were able to contact the bank and it took a few days, but we did get that card yeah. back. But if you are traveling and all of a sudden you find yourself in that situation and you've now lost your card, at least you do have a backup while you're trying to figure out what you're gonna do. Many of them now have where you're gonna scan the card and you're not having to actually insert that card into the machine. And so we have made practice of just looking for that kind of machine now because we just feel way more comfortable after that situation. So like we mentioned, we love what we do. This isn't at all us being negative about it. We just like to keep it real and let you know maybe some of the things that you might experience. And if you're full-time traveling, let us know in the comments, maybe some of your experiences because it really helps other people out to kind of know what to expect. If, you, if we missed anything that you're aware of or if you have any questions that we didn't cover, yeah, just ask. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>